uh, I'll start recording. Yeah, good. Uh, so uh, it's my pleasure to welcome uh, Eduardo here uh, mm -hmm. and uh, Alexander will say a few words uh, about him. Yes, so uh, we are really excited uh, to have you here, uh, Eduardo, uh, and, and let me say a few words. Um, if I see this correctly, uh, you got your PhD from the University of Florence in, in 2016, working with uh, Francesco uh, Beccatini, uh, after which you joined uh, Heidelberg, the Institute for Theoretical Physics, uh, working a lot with uh, Stefan Flöchinger and uh, also the group of Jan Poblowski, and uh, you were part of the uh, Excellence Center uh, mm -hmm. there. And this is where we also had our overlap in, in Heidelberg, and we enjoyed that time quite a lot. And uh, so since uh, 2019, you're now uh, in your second postdoctoral appointment at Stony Brook University, uh, working uh, closely with uh, Derek Tini. And, and I'm quite excited to hear about uh, your recent uh, paper uh, and work uh, that you will present to us today on the conserved and non-conserved neutral currents from the quantum effective action. So please. Okay, thank you, Alexander, for the nice introduction. And uh, yeah, today I will, I will, so I will talk about the, my recent work with Stefan Klechinger. That uh, so it's a collaboration that it's going even if uh, we are kind of follow, uh, even even if we are we are apart and. Um, uh, it's uh, will be so it will be a discussion on uh, essentially relativistic heavy um, relativistic hydrodynamics equation and how you can uh, define them from from a quantum effective action and uh, in this I hope that this will become a little bit more clear later how these these two are related and so that that, that was our uh, principal motivation to study conserve and non-conserve another current. Uh, so, but for, before going there, let's kind of make a tiny bit of, oh, sorry, uh, of kind of introduction. <laughs> so my generally interest in, in uh, energy nuclear collision and, uh, and so, and that's also how the physical system that drive us to, understand, to, to study this type of quantity and uh, for people that are not familiar, we, uh, I put here the slides to you know, um, highlight the different different phases, how we understand these different phases. And, and it might be worth it to kind of pose ourselves and, and discuss a little bit. So in a navy ion collision program, you, you want to study the, the collision of two heavy nuclei, like for example, lead or gold, and that, that, that are currently uh, collide at LHC and even at RIC here in, uh, in Long Island. And so you want one can one uh, accelerate the, these heavy nuclei at really relativistic energy, and they they make a lot. The since twenty years we have a good understanding of what are the physical process and what are the, the general dynamics of of this of this collision that uh, uh, that the occur. And so from after the initial phase where the two nuclei collide and they deposit energy to the system when the the physics is governed by mainly over occupied uh, uh, gluon fields they suddenly thermalize and <laughs> and and, uh, and they, they 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 form a, a tiny liquid droplet of, of nuclear matter that it's locally thermalized and this start expanding in the vacuum and then in, uh, during this phase this called qgp phase it's um, the, his evolution it's mainly given by ma mainly described by relativistic uh, hydrodynamic equation uh, and then this uh, this droplet of liquid is uh, expanding and then from the quark designated degrees of freedom it hadronizes and it forms uh, hadron set in measure at the experiment in, in the detector and uh, so there are different phases it's, it's a rather complicated uh, uh, system to study, but the, the nice things, yeah, I think the, the things that we are kind of, the main reason that I'm interested in this type of system is that the main part of evolution, it's given by a generic conservation law that allow to reduce the complexity of the QCD evolution to simple 
uh, relativistic hydrodynamic equation. And essentially, during all this phase, the system, it's, uh, since it's a uh, strong interaction, it, it's, it's really well described by a fluid. And uh, so and this kind of, it's what, what, what took me to, to, to study this, this subject in, in the first, in the first um, when I was a, a master's student, for example. Um, so in uh, this, uh, this type of uh, collision actually are one of the main system, the, the, one of the, the system that we can actually uh, probe the QCD uh, at final temperature, and when we can, can characterize the, this property from from uh, from experimental point of view, and uh, so the challenge is kind of to uh, characterize the this thermodynamic and transport property of QCD uh, from theoretical point of view, and also make a comparison with the experiment and understand understand if we if we kind of characterize uh, fairly well the system. So. Uh, what, but so I said fluid dynamics. So what is fluid dynamics? Fluid dynamics, it's a, it's a kind of a modern view. It's an effective theory of, of matter where what you, or one is only interested in long distance and long time uh, behavior of, of, a, of, a, of a system. And then uh, the, the, the interesting part is that one needs only few microscopic properties to describe the evolution, the time evolution of the complicated non-equilibrium system. Uh, and this, this quantity are the equation of state, the, and then some transport coefficient like bulk viscosity, heat conductivity, and and uh, and, and other. And uh, for uh, the the nice thing is of QCD is that in principle we we know the microscopic Lagrangian, we know how how the microscopic physics is, and so in principle we, we could be able to compute this quantity and characterize the transport of property of QCD. Uh, and so that this is not kind of actually true in other context matter system, but in QCD we are lucky about that. But clearly, since QCD is rather complicated theory, this this this, this calculation are usually rather complicated, and and so there's not so many available. Uh, but so that's kind of the general uh, principle of dynamics. So you try to reduce the complexity of the non-equilibrium evolution of QCD using only a few degrees of freedom that are the conserved one, if you want, and that survive after a long time uh, of behavior. So that, that's the, the free dynamics. So in, um, uh, so this is kind of propaganda slide. So with Stefan, we actually uh, build the model that it's rather different respect to the model that I usually use to, 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 to characterize the, the, to study the, the, the evolution of the system. So the idea was kind of built up by Stefan and Wurz Wiedermann in the 2014. And so the idea was instead of, uh, usually this simulation you do one thing because the, the initial condition are fluctuating. And in order to compare with experimental data, one, one needs to uh, sample the initial condition, make an evolution, and then sample again, make another evolution. So, and that this this type of, of procedure can be kind of cumbersome and require that you have to buy a cluster somewhere for computing time. And uh, our idea, it's so the idea of Stefan Woods was to kind of split and try to make this average and and uh, use a kind of um, quantum field theory technique to study the evolution, one can, can study the evolution of the uh, average field, like the background, and then study the, the two-point function and how the fluctuation evolved on top of it. So that, that was the, the project that was paid in Heidelberg, and we kind of uh, developed codes that, that allows to do that. And, uh, and this is really similar idea and concept that is uh, successfully applied in con to study the cosmological perturbation that uh, in, in uh, uh, that uh, so the CMB uh, spectrum and uh, and this this type of decomposition allows kind of a really fast and precise in principle comparison with experimental data so in uh, using this code you don't need to run it on cluster you don't need to <laughs> buy computer time somewhere you can run on laptop and get some 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 uh, nice comparison uh, that for example are this one <laughs> so this is the uh, some so a comparison we did with the, the people at GSI. And so we did the mo a model calculation that it's a kind of, you start with the initial condition, then you evolve with the fluid dynamics, and then you, you, you compute what are the spectra of the particle that arise uh, uh, at the end. And, uh, and these are the spectra of pions, protons, and kaons produced at uh, LHC, measured by Alice. And then as you can see the, 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 the theory and the, 
uh, model calculation are rather in good agreement, but there's some tension everywhere. But the, 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 the main point is that now the data of heavy iron collision are getting rather precise. And uh, so we need kind of a better understanding of what are the, the, the theory behind that and in particular uh, to study, for example, for example, fluctuation. So that's, that, that, that's kind of my, my, my goal, my message of, of this slide. Uh, if you see here, there's a, <laughs> there's a one to mention. <laughs> uh, here in the low PT part of science, there's, there's something that, yeah, never, you know, at, at Rick, it wasn't there. So that's why I put kind of condensate. Line. And it would be so that kind of what I'm working with Derek now and so on. Um, yeah, so uh, as, I, as I said before, I want we want so usually the, the main part of the evolution it's a relative, it's given by relativistic fluid dynamics. And uh, so then I, I, will, I will use a little bit of time to explain what is the kind of in a few slides, what is actually how to write this equation down. For a, for a generic system. And so the main object of, of, uh, of the practice to rule free dynamics, the energy momentum tensor, T mu nu, and how we'll see later, this, this, uh, this object is the, has to be intended as the average of an energy momentum tensor. And this is a, actually is, a, is another current, and so it actually is conserved. So that it's divergent in zero. And uh, so then, and then in principle, one can also consider a, a current, and uh, for example, the variant number current. And also, this one is another current, and and uh, and, uh, and it's a bit divergent in zero. So these are kind of the equation of motion of, of our system. And um, at global homogeneous equilibrium, this energy momentum tensor has this uh, kind of well known form when you have the energy density and the pressure, and u mu is the forward velocity of, 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 of the of the of the system. So this is so called uh, ideal hydrodynamics. So if, if once you uh, uh, specify a relation between energy and pressure, or eventually energy as a function of temperature, pressure as a function of temperature, uh, uh, of, pre uh, of temperature, uh, one can actually solve this, uh, this, uh, this evolution equation and uh, kind of uh, understand how the energy density uh, change in the function of time. And, that, and that's rather powerful. So the same equation I use in other type of context, on, Giving navy ion collision like example cosmology, or uh, if one want to study the Newton's star measure, the matter field it's basic, it's uh, the matter field is it's mainly given by this evolution of the energy momentum tensor. So, this is so that that's why it's kind of powerful because it, it can be applied really at different type of system and in different type of context. Uh, so yeah, this is the, the ideal part, the ideal evolution. But in uh, and so in these slides, I, I want to kind of, but clearly this is not uh, the only two quantity that can characterize the energy moment of tense, and that that kind of would be the the, the one of the major part of the of this uh, of this talk is try to understand how if we, it would be possible to to describe also the other component. Of Moment. So in this figure that I stole from this nice book that I suggest to everyone to read it if you're interested. Uh, you see that the energy density is just one, the CT00 component of the energy momentum tensor, and the pressure is the diagonal. Indeed, there's a lot of other structure over here that are the energy flux and momentum flux that that are possible, so that are uh, different, that are uh, that, that, that could be there and that they can play a role. And so this is the, so in, in this case, I, we, we generally in navy ion collision uh, parameterize as a, a stress tensor, this pi mu nu here, this is off diagonal element. And then we have also a, a viscous pressure that it's uh, this pi bulk here. And it, um, uh, and it kind of uh, parameterize how much the pressure, the isotropic pressure differ respect to the equilibrium. So the, it, it's also a really interesting quantity to study. Uh, so yeah, why did those, uh, those quantities are important? Because if you want to move away from, from ideal uh, relativistic hydrodynamics, uh, one needs to allow that this, uh, this, uh, this object in the energy momentum tensor will be different from zero. And uh, the generic uh, structure that one can write off is, uh, is, is the following. So we have the energy, and then we have the pressure as before, but now we have these two other objects uh, different from zero, pi bulk and pi minimum. Uh, 
And uh, clearly, this is rather general decomposition of the energy momentum and tensor. And, and in order to solve the equation, then no one needs to specify what are these objects. And uh, a way to do that is to perform a gradient dysfunction. So one say that the, 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 these non equilibrium quantities uh, are proportional to the, the gradient in your system. And then we use the fact that since we are interested in the long time, the long, uh, long time evolution and long wavelength uh, dynamics, we can assume that these gradients are rather small. So it's uh, the, the evolution, it's kind of smooth. So there's no super, super uh, uh, high frequency dynamics. We are not interested in that. So the, doing that, one can specify this pi bulk as a efficient proportional to, to the rate expansion, this nabla u, and the, the prime new one, the disk coefficient is called bulk viscosity. And the, for um, the shear stress tensor, one, one, one can do a similar thing. One, one can say that this uh, pi new is proportional to the uh, symmetric traceless um, combination of the uh, of the gradient of the velocity multiplied by 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 efficient right? it's called the shear viscosity and the, this form is kind of dictated by the if you want the requirement that the, the, the entropy production on the system it's positive uh, definitely so in, in this kind of enforce that the, this coefficient should be there and should be also constant do not depend on the gradient. so that that what is never stokes uh it's, it's all about. And uh, we are kind of familiar with, so this, this construction works in relativistic and relativistic context. However, in a, a non-relativistic context, um, uh, Neville-Stokes equation is applied every day to study the, I will, for example, do weather forecast or to study uh, fluid dynamics in general. And the equation, yeah, are rather similar to the relativistic one. Huh? And uh, in, uh, Technically, this, this is a partial differential equation, and in a relativistic case, this is a parabolic partial differential equation. So if one specifies the boundary condition of our system and the initial condition, one can prove that there's a local solution and the, the, the Cauchy problem is well posed and we are real happy, so you can try to solve it. The problem with the relativistic case is that uh, th this is not true anymore. So the, the equation is not, been, is not anymore parabolic because if you write here on the, so it looks kind of similar, but if you look here on the right hand side, there's time derivative involved there. And so uh, the Cauchy problem from this type of uh, equation is, is not well posed. Yeah, it was actually proved by these two gentlemen. And so what does it mean is that this equation allows that the signal propagation propagate faster than the speed of light. And so we have kind of been completely inconsistent with the special relativity. So that, well, that was kind of something that it's always hanging around, and it's really. Uh, and then, so if you want to see, so if you want to try, if you want to try to to generalize to never so to relativistic case, it's kind of uh, messy and it's not really well posed problem. Uh, the solution to that was already found in the 70s, but in, in a modern language, one does a further gradient dysfunction. Uh, so this way of doing was kind of pointed out by Bayerson, uh, this, this famous paper here, uh, written by a Bayer, and then there's Paul, uh, Romachke, uh, Dan Stone, Stalin, etc. And essentially what one does, what do, do a further gradient dysfunction, what goes one order higher. So you can see here this second derivative. And, uh, and then when I write down explicitly what are the, all the possible coefficients that are there and do the same for the pi mu nu and uh, for the pi bulk here. And, uh, but uh, as it is in this form where the, the, this coefficient is simply given by seven or the gradient of the temperature per velocity, uh, uh, as before, this, 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 uh, these things cannot work and will not generate nice equation of motion. And uh, the, the, the idea was kind of already in the, uh, in the 70, in the 60 was already pointed out. So you have this gradient expansion where pi mu nu is, is equal to the first order gradient plus correction of a higher order. And one kind of promote these uh, second order variables, sigma mu nu, as a dynamical variable and it's called pi mu. And in this case, you, you, you can kind of, and doing that, you neglect in higher order um, gradient. So it's a third order gradient in the gradient test function. So it's, if you allow this counting, it's a, it's a, it's a legit operation. And uh, if you do that, then one ends up with, a, with an equation that instead of involving a second derivative of sigma, you have a first derivative of this pi mu that it's the stress part of the energy momentum. 
and so, and so this, uh, this is a, a kind of a relaxation type of equation. And it, this, this time scale that, and what does it mean? Is that after a transit time this, that is given by this tau pi, the, the value of the Shestes and so it became equal to the, to the, to the value of the, of the uh, stress in your system multiplied by the viscosity. And this transient time is actually a new transport coefficient and it's a rather interesting one. So, and, and, uh, uh, so this is kind of the, the general idea about this semantic theory and the full equation I've written here and actually was already derived in the 70, but recently, so recently. 10 years ago, almost. <laughs> not so recently, was really um, rederived by, by Gabriel in this, in this famous paper here. And so the, the, the main idea is that you allow them, uh, you have a, this, this uh, quantity in the energy moment tensor, this component of the energy moment tensor are a dynamical quantity. And so they're not simply given by gradient of, of, of thermodynamic one. And, uh, and then you need more transport efficiency to up for example, that regulates the time scale that this, 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 this component evolves in time. Um, so in this, 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 this equation are actually proven to be, so can be solved and that they will actually are solved every day in every hydro code that is used in every ion condition. And uh, why, do, why so? Because this, this equation to be proven to be hyperbolic. So a quasi-linear partial differential equation of the first order. And uh, you can prove that actually are hyperbolic and then the, their characteristic problem is well-defined. And, and then you can solve the, the, Cauchy, the Cauchy problem for that. And actually in, with, with Stefan, we, we actually uh, made in practice this mathematical definition, and we study the, the characteristic the, the, the characteristic problem of of, um, of the, the, the the equation that I that I showed before, and uh, and this uh, kind of allows in, uh, to, to 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 do this this plot, and it's kind of worth worth it to 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 explain a little bit what's going on here. So here we have a kind of a simulation of a, in a, if you want a simple model of heavy ion collision when you have only a time and radial expansion. So you have this round fiber that you expand. So, but the equation of state, it's a, it's a kind of the um, usual one. And uh, here we, it's kind of a constant temperature uh, line. And here I, I wrote down what are the, so for a given point, what are the light cone, it is dash line. Yeah. And these are the, the fluid light cone. So given by the characteristic of the fluid. And uh, these, these two, these three line in this case, define what are the domain of influence and the domain of dependence of this given point. And as you can see, these are uh, actually inside of the light cone of, of, uh, of uh, the lower light cone of, of my system. And uh, in the second plot here, it's kind of Pernod's diagram. So I pick up these, these lines and then I wrote it in a Pernod's diagram, like for, if you will do it for a black hole, that, that was kind of awesome. Nice exercise to do, and if you see it, all these light cones are inside of the future light cone, and uh, uh, and so they're they're they angled. It's less than forty five degrees, so there's no alkalosality in, in this type of equation. The the, the, the the green <laughs> and the the red line are they following the speed of sound? Oh, uh, so they are uh, they are uh, so. They're following, so it's a V, so the, the velocity plus the speed of sound in the ideal case. So it's the relativistic sum of the, v, the velocity, the velocity, the speed of sound in the ideal case. If you uh, allow dissipation, the, uh, so if you allow viscosity, but viscosity, they will also get modified by that. And we wrote the formula for that. So the local characteristic are changed if you put uh, also viscosity inside that. And, uh, there's also the same estimation. Uh, also, Paul did the same estimation from a different type of, uh, of um, uh, uh, reasoning. Essentially, he considered the group velocity, the infinite group velocity. And then you can show that the group velocity and the ideal case, you get kind of the relativistic sum of the local velocity plus the speed of sound. But if you, if you, if you have this uh, divergent type theory, so this uh, relaxation type theory, also the, the viscosity, the ratio between viscosity and relaxation time play a role there, then you can get modified. You get the square root of speed of sound plus um, Four third eta over s eta over tau and also the same for the third part. That, that's the second order correction with the speed of sound. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So and uh, and uh, yeah, and actually, if you so uh, also once I also try to to put this velocity 
get it in one and then my other code broke down. And, and so that's also why I wrote down here that these are, these are consideration poses kind of limits on the evolution, on the type of transport coefficient that, that can be allowed for, for, for general ground. That, that was actually one of the main points of this paper. <laughs> and um, and uh, now this, uh, this was done in, uh, in uh, just a round fireball expanding. And uh, now recently, George Noronha and collaborators, they push forward this kind of uh, Calculation, then they let I for a generic uh, DM. So the, the, the derivation that I showed before is generic three plus one, and they have bounds. And uh, there's also was a recent paper by Jackino, Jackino Ronya that kind of showed that there's some initial condition that violates that. And so that, that's rather important. Uh, from so, so how does the Jackie's paper relate to this? I didn't quite understand. Sorry? So how does the Jackie's paper relate to this? So, uh, so it's a kind of the same idea. <laughs> so, uh, so essentially, they solved the characteristic problem for this equation. Mm -hmm. They found that the, what are the local velocity, if you want, and then they imposed that the local velocity should be less than the speed of light. And then, then you, you so this local velocity depends on the state, also depends on the temperature, and also on the pi, on the viscous pressure, and the bulk viscous pressure. And uh, and so then for that you can get some inequality that your state locally should 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 fulfill for if you want that these guys should be less than the speed of light should be and uh, so then in principle you can you can have uh, so in our in our paper here we we kind of found that there are some initial condition that can violate these. <laughs> So the, the, in particular, if you specify the, pi, the, the stress tensor in the initial state, this is, cannot be done completely general. So cannot be have completely crazy stress tensor, but we also, so that's our restriction. So, so, so these violations come because of large shear stress tensor. Yes, essentially, if it's too large, then then stands getting, getting better. Or the, because your transport coefficients are kind of crazy, <laughs> and uh, for example, uh, the for example, you you, you get the um, violation of causality if the relaxation time it's uh, the ratio of uh, eta and zeta. It's kind of uh, um, so the ratio eta over tau it's uh, greater than one if you get something really crazy. <laughs> Usually this ratio, so the, the inverse ratio for, uh, so Derek and Guy also have a paper on that, it's kind of bounded by three, the one, so one over three. And if you put kind of super crazy uh, eta over, over, over tau, you can get also a relation with it. And then your hydro code will break down. Wait, so, so what you're saying is that if the coagulum plasma happened, didn't happen to be a perfect liquid, the hydrodynamical description would fail. Yeah, actually, yeah. Well, so we make the conclusion that the the um, coagulum plasma is a perfect liquid because the hydro description um, works. <laughs> but anything else we can do? No, but this this can be used in practice. So mm -hmm. you can say that yeah, this this pi mu maybe it's too large somewhere here. So then it's kind of not visible. That, that's kind of that's something that we pointed out in this paper, and also Jockey did that. Mm -hmm. the, could you explain a little bit more this this Penrose diagram? I'm not <laughs> so used to black holes that that I could. Actually... So you have uh, so you you pick up your speed. So okay, that's I, I, but I like it. So <laughs> so you take your space time. This case is tau and r. Then you compactify it, and uh, so on the x axis you have this draw the compactify radius and this uh, sigma then is compacted five time then you have the, the future e plus is the future infinity and uh, this is the spatial infinity i zero and then sigma zero is the initial condition and this uh, tau plus is the light like infinity so nothing should uh, cross this light like infinity because if you so here and these lines are the, the solution of this equation so essentially in this uh, in this in this diagram and uh, yeah and here we have this uh, bending curve and they they always stay inside of the light and that was how so why why we find it interesting and here I also draw the freeze out surface if you want so the constant time constant temperature of the yeah, or the, or this simple model if you want. And uh, so this is kind of, yeah. it's, a, it's a way to illustrate the fact that the, the characteristic curve are always bent inside of this, of this, of this diagram. And uh, 
you know, was useful. Uh, Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of yeah the issue and the, the thing that I kind of yeah at least my personal taste I don't like in in um, in uh, current kind of modeling of uh, collision and in particular in a relativistic head, uh, free dynamic equation. And uh, so as I said, this fluid definition are rather successful as I also kind of show. I also to show before. So, and uh, to kind of approximate what is the non equilibrium dynamics. In, uh, if you are really only interested in, uh, in the microscopic regime, uh, when the, 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 the fields kind of vary slowly, really, really slowly. And uh, the, 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 the nice, so the, the things that I, I would like, but also other people I think would like, it's kind of a derivation from a quantum effective action. Uh, why though? Because it, First of all, one can, from that, you can get directly the two-point function the, and the endpoint function under this approximation. And that, that will be rather powerful. And also for, for comparing with experimental data, we, we will want it because it would be interesting to see how, not, not, not how much are the expectation value volume, but also the variance of, of the observable and, and other conditions. That will be kind of needed and will be also a great test of this hydro paradigm because, yeah, everything works at, at the level of equation of motions, kind of we are getting what are the main evolution. But yeah, another question is, okay, and the two-point function, it's really thermal or not, or what are the fluctuations? So this type of question, one needs so I think to be attacked would be the, the effective action point of view. And uh, the general principle, it's, uh, yeah, kind of already explained that, it, but it's also, it's, I think the first one that I pointed out with the of Martin point of view is that the most excitation really doesn't matter. Only the really, really slow one should matter in this type of evolution. And, uh, and so the super crazy frequency in the, of the quantum evolution, most of them, they, they average out. And, and the, the important ones are the conserved ones that like energy, momentum, and or particle density. And these are generally called aerodynamic modes. But I also showed before that for a kind of requirement of simple relativistic invariance, you, one needs some non-aerodynamic mode in that one needs to introduce some another hypnotic mode into the description. And uh, so, and the, our point of this uh, paper with a really fancy name is it's possible to obtain uh, this non hydrodynamic mode equation for general grounds for symmetry consideration. Like, we, like I will show and we kind of know that this, this uh, conserved quantity uh, evolution like are given by symmetry consideration, like dif different increasing invariance or energy time, 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 uh, time translation invariant. Right. So that, that was kind of the motivation. So it took me a while to, <laughs> to explain. So it's possible to obtain. So in the, from, from this point of view, this equation is like a method of truncation of a gradient expansion. And we would like to have kind of given meaning to this equation. And, if, can we understand how, how this equation, the general structure of this equation arises? Uh, I ask a question, question here. No? So, so can, can I just ask a question of nomenclature yeah, yeah. that confuses me always? Yes. So, so you're talking about quantum effective action, but you're talking about the classical system. Uh, you are talking about a classical system that does have thermal fluctuations. Mm -hmm. um, so, so there's, there's quantum fluctuations, there are thermal fluctuations. Um, and then you also mentioned the two-point function, but the two-point function that you mentioned in this fluidum, that's a completely classical, unfluctuating um, green function, right? Yeah. So, so I'm just trying to understand what, what is the quantum in your quantum effective action? Uh, so the, in principle, in the quantum effective action, there's everything. Statistical fluctuation. If you take double time one, there's everything, no? There's thermal so in there's statistical fluctuation from the initial state or quantum fluctuation. So and then from that one can can think of, of deriving this 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 And uh, the, but the main point is that okay, not even the, the, the evolution of the, the of the fields, it's not understood. At least from my point of view, it's not completely understood. So that that that, that was the, that that's the, that's the the motivation. And the, the, the quantum effective action gives you an instrument that you can kind of start with. And then you, you do a bunch of approximation that are kind of reasonable, inspired by 
Uh, but only... just as a simple, simple question, so what's your aim? So you have the hydro equations. Do you want to understand at the end of the day, hydro plus thermal fluctuations, hydro plus quantum fluctuations, hydro? Uh, so hydro plus the relevant flux. So uh, first of all, uh, we, with freedom, we understood kind of how the initial state fluctuation can be described, if you want. Or also other people understood yeah, how the initial But those are purely classical fluctuations. Yes, but in principle, can also in the in the the, the point that okay, uh, the thermal fluctuation are yeah, uh, theoretically are understood, but in practice, then nobody introduced. So nobody uh, introducing the code if you want and, and do that, and in, pre in possible there would be also quantum fluctuation. For example, in the initial state, I, I, I would think that it would be also quantum fluctuation or somewhere so and then 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 the, so and the, all these fluctuation can be actually accessed by a quantum fluctuation and and uh, that also what, what what kind of what drive us so at the end of this this talk you will present us with the quantum effective action that no no i will not so I, yeah that's why i put that okay so yeah no i will not do that if not that would be it. so oh, okay, okay. i'm sorry i, I would i shouldn't address with this one yeah so uh, so we, we did a little bit more modest too <laughs> we we try to point it out if so now we want to understand it's possible to have uh, extra equation uh so we have conservation of energy and momentum. And then our question was, it's possible to have some other equation of motion for this non-hydrodynamic mode? That's not now kind of what we want to, and I think what we have kind of shown in this paper. And uh, the main, main point was to start somewhere. And then we start for full thing, quantum effective action. And, and uh, we try to understand that. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Okay, uh, so the, the, the point is how, so how to obtain these, uh, these uh, extra, the extra equation. And uh, so as I said before, so what the starting point is the uh, one PI or quantum effective action. So the, 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 here I put the slide to recap the definition. So you have, uh, so in this case, we, we, we usually define the partition function zeta or Schwinger function, it's logarithm. And uh, as a usual way, as a path integral of the of the of the of the exponential of the action, and with source added uh, on top of it, and uh, then the quantum effective action is defined as the Legendre transform respect to the source, and uh, with the expectation value given by, by by this. And the nice thing of this object that in principle include all quantum fluctuations, statistical fluctuation, and everything. So, and uh, and if to get the full evolution, one simply have to take a functional derivative, and these are the equation of motion of the average field that you have. So it's a rather generic and kind of general object. And so, and from, from these one can start kind of derive, and so that's kind of useful because it can derive kind of generic feature of, of our system. In this case, I will not specify any ordering in time. In principle, this, the, 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 uh, the argument that, 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 you, that I will use next, uh, can apply in the double time, so in the schwinger keldish formalism in Euclidean or in, in Koski at the same time. So these are simply how, uh, so it, it do not rely on the special timing that you introduce a boundary condition when introducing So that, that's kind of the, the, the our, our motivation, uh, our kind of setup. So we have somebody give us a uh, one PI effective action. So, so I, I have a question about this. So. Yes. So usually, if you have an action, you are describing unitary evolution, right? But now you yes. must use this to a dissipative system. So what's somehow the, the, the essence of the trick, how you deal with that? Uh, so well, now we are not dealing with that. So if you have a dissipative system, you need to, uh, so Stefan also actually has a paper. So you, you have to analytic continue. So this, this is formally well-defined in your lead. Or, uh, and then you have to analytic continue. And when you do that, usually you, you have some discontinuity, some branches here in the, in the, in the, in the, the gamma, if you want, some branch cut. Uh, that's kind of a way to describe non-unitary non evolution. Or there's a, the, the schwinger keldish one, one, one introduces two branches and take the average and, and, the, and the sum uh, of, the, of, the, of the fields and then you know, 
take the uh, and then the, the mean evolution is is, is given by the average of, uh, the, the the variation respect to the to the difference and then taking the, the difference to zero and this already encode the dissipative so clearly for a non-unitary dissipative it's rather complicated to formulate an action because the action are really something that are built only for for um, unitary evolution so for for um, uh, considering so that's also why it's kind of hard to have an effective action from 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 that that has only one field for fluid dynamics <laughs> because it does it's kind of complicated <laughs> to have and uh, so the way to do that is to 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 use this double time formulation to introduce this response field uh, or kind of introducing some unitary part in, in the action that was also the point of Shetland from 2016. I answer. Mm -hmm. I like it. Thanks. No, you, uh, you, can you point it? So, can you? No, I, 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 maybe it's not essential for this talk. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, if me, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, the, so, this is kind of our start point of view. So, this static point. Uh, so, then once you have this effective action, you can also think to couple to a uh, metric. And uh, so you define gamma that depends on the phi, the uh, background value, and the metric. And then you assume that the, the action is actually stationary uh, with respect to the field. And, uh, and then, okay, we have here the kind of the derivation of conservation law. So in uh, the metric, it's uh, in, so the space time is invariant under different morphism. And so uh, acting on the metric, this is transformed like a gauge transformation. This is the, the Epsilon, and uh, if you define the, the energy momentum in the usual way, so as a variation respect to the metric, uh, you get for free. So you get from another <laughs> another current that the, this this object here. So the expectation value of the energy momentum tensor. This is conserved. So this what so this what what, what we meant as a kind of so this effective action is kind of the starting point that allows you to, the, to, to do this argument and to define uh, the, uh, this, 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 uh, this equation. That is kind of, if you want, the evolution equation for the energy, for, the, for, for our field. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of the nice derivation that you find in the textbook of why the energy momentum tensor is, is conserved and what does it mean conserve an energy momentum tensor? It's given by, so it's a consequence of different physical variance. And so since you have this invariance, you have a, an associated another uh, type of relation. But when and, you say, you know, if you say you find this in the literature, uh, you find it for the classical action in the literature, uh, or are you saying that one finds this already for the effective action? Yeah, yeah. The, the same holds for uh, for the fact action. So in ginger stand, it's kind of yeah for this one. So if you see in ginger stand, so the same holds for the for the for the, for the quantum effective action. And uh, if there's no anomaly, that so that that this holds. So and uh, you can can be kind of proved. And uh, so that's kind of the so and that's kind of if you want that hydro. So this, the hydro innovation, what does it mean that the energy momentum is conserved? Then you have to kind of specify what is the energy momentum then. So that's kind of the point. And, uh, but in, in, uh, as before, I kind of show you that there's more equation of motion and uh, how to understand those equation of motion. And the first, the first thing is that they are not conservation because they, they do not correspond to any conservation law. So, and then we, we try to look at kind of out of the box a little bit. And, uh, and then we, we kind of define this, uh, this, uh, this quantity that it's a so-called hyper, hyper momentum current that was defined in the seventies by this gentleman here. And uh, so the point is that in the, in the previous derivation, you assume that kind of the, 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 the Christoffel and the and the metric are related. So the Christopher of the Levi Civita. So you assume that the, the, the space, the, the connection is given by the gradient of the metric. And uh, but you can also not do that for a little bit, for do a tiny bit of calculation. And then say, okay, let's define two tensors now. One is the variation with respect to the metric, and then I call this uh, fancy U at fixed Christopher symbol. And one is the variation of the Christopher, this uh, S, fancy S. 
And uh, first of all, these two objects are actually tensor. So they, they transform as a tensor. So a well-defined uh, GR object. And this uh, these, uh, U, it's symmetric. And this uh, S, it's uh, kind of generic. <laughs> And uh, this uh, object that it's called in this paper is called hypermomentum. Uh, can be decomposed if you play with the index in the in this in this form here. So as a spin, as a symmetric, anti-symmetric in the two index part given by these three guys. There's a trace part that it's uh, called W here, and then there's a symmetric traceless. So as you as you do for for any rank three tensor, you can decompose it. And we give a name to these guys, and these these names are actually motivated by what we found after. So this S here is called spirit current, that maybe some of you already know, some cases. This W it's a, actually a dilatation current or while uh, while uh, H fit, and uh, and this Q is actually the what's called shear current, and. Uh, also because, because it's uh, symmetric in the last two index and it's traceless, so it's, it's, a, it's a good name. So this is kind of definition, what are these two objects? And uh, in this case, I take a generic variation of the, of the connection. And uh, so, but the generic variation of the connection, in principle, we have two pieces. One, it's kind of, kind of what we are used to. So the, levi with apart, so the, the variation of the connection, then you have to relate to the variation of the metric. And then plus these two other pieces, these uh, variation of this, and, this, and uh, these pieces are kind of, if you allow, really generic connection. So the, the, your manifold is not the Riemannian anymore. Uh, you, can, you can define the structure and, and you can, and uh, this, this uh, parameterize this extra. So if you assume that this, extra, not Riemannian part, are zero actually, you get the decomposition of, of the energy momentum tensor in the previous, given by this relation essentially. Uh, so this is the uh, symmetric energy momentum tensor, the one that you will couple to the to Einstein equation that can be decomposed as a sum of these two pieces. This uh, new symmetric tensor that I call U, multi uh, added with a, with a gradient of the share term, share current, and the dilatation current. And uh, so this is actually what we found interesting because in this case, you can kind of, from, so writing from the other way around, you can say, okay, what they wish, we can write down some non-conserved equation of this current. And uh, so for if you put everything from the other side, you get the, 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 the the, grade, the divergence of this W is equal to this, uh, uh, to the, so to the, the, the difference of this trace of the two, the two tensor and the same equation holds for this uh, shared current. And uh, so that's actually what we meant for non-conserved current. And uh, what does it, so how, so this is holds for uh, the wild current and for the shared current. And what happens to the spin current? In this case, the spin current seems anti-symmetric and kind of do not enter in the energy momentum tensor. In order to see that, you, you have to kind of formulate everything in Fierbein. Oh, sorry. Uh, so you define a tie thread that is called this uh, VA mu, and you define a spin connection, this omega AB. Then you can do the same, the same game. So you, you vary the, the, the Fierbein or the tie thread as a fit spin connection, and then the, the spin connection fixed metric. And then, then you get the definition of these two objects. So the, this T, fancy T, it's a, actually the canonical that you, that you can found in the textbook, canonical energy momentum tensor. And this uh, other guy, S, is what you call the spin current that some, somewhere is called sigma in, in the literature. And uh, if you actually then impose that the, the, connect, the spin connection is given by the Fierbein of Tethred, you get the, 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 the symmetric energy momentum tensor in terms of these other two tensors defined here. And so the symmetric energy momentum tensor is the canonical one plus the grade, gradient of the spin tensor. And this is what uh, people, uh, found in the early 70s as Belifante-Rosenfeld Rosen, form of the original. 
the how from the Hanani how you can get the the, the symmetric one. Eduardo, can I can I ask you the last two slides? Did they depend on the action that you're looking at being the quantum effective action? Because it no. seemed more that this is something about allowing uh, different types of variations. Uh, when deriving the team you knew or the variation of the action, so you could you have you could have done the same arguments also for the classical action and gotten extra terms here. Uh, so yeah, the point that the, the, so I actually have an example, and then you did you did that. But in the classical case, it, so the system is integrable. Then you have so these variations are related to symmetry, and then I will discuss later. And uh, in, in the either so in the classical case. You get yeah you have an integrable system you have a lot of symmetry and usually these objects are zero ah okay and so then you you need kind of fluctuation or interaction to generate that that also what I found interesting and uh, and also and yeah so that that is also the point and uh, and so in the in the yeah, that, that's what, what we kind of maybe, yeah, that to point out a little bit more. So, and uh, so, and then in, in the, so this is kind of the, 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 the composition in this form. And then you can do the same. So the, then the, the spin tensor uh, satisfy an equation that it's the, its divergence is equal to the antisymmetric part of the canonical energy momentum. Tensor. So that this is kind of could be familiar to someone. But this is in Minkowski space time, it, it kind of it's the same statement to do that the total energy momentum is conserved. Because in Minkowski space time, then you have a kind of a, a, an, an extra symmetry in your system, you, you have a rotational symmetry. And again, in a, this can be understood as non-conserved, not uh, yeah. So what this equation could imply. So first of all, these objects are well-defined tensor. And could, in principle, give information of the out of equilibrium, uh, of the state about out, uh, out of equilibrium uh, uh, during out of equilibrium evolution. And uh, they, 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 the, the nice thing is also that they contribute to an energy momentum tensor, but they are proportional to gradients. So, the, in an ideal case, they usually vanish. And, uh, and this is why I used the word cool. So because they could, so Yuan can could use those equations as a kind of equation of motion for this non hydrodynamic mode, because they kind of uh, uh, ex um, encode how the, 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 the shares part and dilatation part of, of, my, of my matter field evolve in time. And uh, the expectation value are naturally kind of, if you want, uh, given by variation respect to non-Riemannian part of the connection. And the, the, the now also the, the nice property that they have that the, the, the equation that you end up are div uh, the divergent type. And for this type of equation, there's a similar paper by Kerov Lindo in the 90s that showed that causality is satisfied and they're super nice to it. So that, that's why we, are, we were interested to that. And uh, so that's that what, 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 what the point. And uh, I, I want to explain on one slide, a little bit technical, what, what actually means for uh, symmetry here. <laughs> so in the in this non-Romanian space, you have the connection that is given by the levi shivita one, and then you have other tensor. This guy C is defined as contortion tensor, and it's, it's a kind of a combination of a torsion. So you're allowing, your space to have a torsion. And uh, this is kind of how to parameterize it. And these other two guys, uh, you have a B hat that it's called proper normatricity, and it parameterizes how the, the uh, nabla, the metric, is different from zero, how much is different from zero. This is the traceless part, and this B is the trace part of, of this definition. So you're allowing that your system has a torsion. And also a normatric system, so that the geodesics are not out of parallel. So you have loud and really generic structure in the system. And uh, the nice things that, that we found super interesting is that if you go in a tetrad formulation, these are, are actually gauge field, and uh, that kind of uh, the gauge field about what transformation. So in the, if you allow the the, the, the tetrad, you have these two index. You have the space time index, and then you have the local index. That kind of labeling your your uh, rest your um, tetrad 
And uh, in this case, this, this gauge transformation are actually the, the um, uh, G, so the pra parameterize the, the generic general linear transformation, so a generic change of basis of the theta. And uh, some of them are kind of symmetry. So if you do a local Lorentz transformation, the metric actually is invariant, but the share part and the dilatation part uh, are not symmetric. So and that's why are not another curve. And uh, the other point that uh, also it's kind of important to point out that this the action the, so this seem this uh, transformation change the action, but they change the action in a calculable way, and that that's also the point of the other two slides that I have. And so if you consider this is rather generic, you can also find the textbook, but it's kind of worth it pointed out. So if you, if I do a field redefinition a field transformation, just kind of uh, writing this way. Uh, with Ti, Tj are some generator of, of an algebra. Uh, you can also define a, a, a gauging of this transformation. So this transformation is actually local, depends on the space time. And then you define the corresponding gauge field. A, the, here I call Aj, new. And, uh, and then it transforms as usual. So you have the homogeneous term, and then you have the term proportional to the grid of the parameter. And uh, if you do this one, you can de derive this uh, another, if you want, uh, current, assuming that the, if, you, uh, if you do a transformation in the field and also in this extra gauge field that you have defined, the actual action is, is invariant. Uh, so you can write this, this uh, and then if you do a Taylor expansion, you have uh, the, 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 so this is the transform, quantum effective action is equal to the, the non transform one plus you, you may pay a term that I call here with AJ that is proportional to the, to the gradient. And uh, you define, as usual, the current as a variation respect to the gauge field. And then you obtain a kind of a conservation law. So here you have the divergence of this current so that it's covariant in this sense, equal to the source and then eventually to the source then. So if the effective action do not uh, remain kind of if this ij is equal to zero, you have a global symmetry. So that means that actually this transformation of the field is a, it's a it's a symmetry. Then you then, then really you have another theorem, and then you have conservation law with charge. And uh, but uh, but this the same way of thinking can be applied also when you don't have symmetry, but you simply have a transformation law of the field. And this transformation law of the field can kind of gen can generate an equation for the average value for some relation between average value. And this is the case when this aj is, is different than zero. And this is what we call extended symmetry that generate not conservative current. And uh, an example of these, apart from the one that I did before, it's kind of a chiral symmetry, you know, that you have uh, the axial symmetry that is not conserved, but you know how much is not conserved is proportional to expectation value of cyber side. So then this is the same thing. So these are non hydrodynamic mode. They are not fulfilled conservation law, but, in, but you can still define some type of divergent type of relation because they, they, they should. Re, um, so the, our point is that you can define some uh, non, uh, non conserved node of current if, if you kind of. Uh, Associate this non hydrodynamic node to some uh, shared uh, to some transformation, and in this case, we say that this is kind of related to the share and the dilatation, and uh, if you want, Lorentz law, law, transformation of the field. And that's kind of yeah. Then <laughs> the answer of, of Alexander, we did the super trivial example, <laughs> and uh, we consider a non-minimal couple scalar field. So in this case, there's no dissipation. There's only one scalar field with the potential coupled to minimally supergravity. And uh, so yeah, I say super trivial because it's not really yeah. Nice example, but these objects are yeah generic, uh, different from zero. So this, you get this team you knew is the generic energy momentum tensor. You will find Viral and Davis. Then you have this W. Mu, so this U mu nu with the curly character that is written down. And then uh, yeah, if you do the all the variation, you get this yeah the spin current that is defined over here. Then it depends per, only for the half into the metric because yeah this is scalar field. There's no spin. Then there's dilatation current, 
that is proportional to the gradient of phi square. And if you put the, the kind of conformal value of psi once uh, and then you put the four dimension, it is actually zero. So this is, and it was also zero for t equal to two. And, and then you have the shared current that is other guy. And actually, it depends only on the happening on the metric that you have. So that sounds kind of answered what, what you asked before. So if, you, if I do not consider happening on the metric, these are trivial because these, and actually, these are trivial. It means that you have a symmetry, extra symmetry, in this uh, field redefinition in, in the tether in all of your scalar field. So that's why we want to have an effective action because this would depend on, on, on the on the happening usually on, on, on or the fluctuation uh, of both. So that, that's kind of the super typical example. That's the one. And these are my conclusion. So we derive some new identity from symmetry principle, and this kind of should hold everywhere, and then allows us to define other quantity like dilatation share spin current. And uh, they can be understood as variation with respect to the non-Riemannian part of the connection. And Clearly, do not depend on the fact that we are not in minor space. This quantity also should be defined in vacuum and Minkowski, if you want. Uh, and, uh, and then these, these, uh, these uh, quantity dilatations, share and spin current, are, uh, have some non conserved over current equation, like, and, uh, because they are extended symmetry. So they are not uh, symmetry of the action, but the action transform in a particular way. So then you can track back what is the equation that you get as a, as a, as a result of it. And our point that could be useful to, to formulate this particular is I don't know if you mentioned. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you very much for a, uh, for a nice talk and you're exactly on time. Uh, so are there any questions? So is, is part of this to re-derive uh, a hydrodynamic description that overcomes the problem of the non-causalness in the end? Is, is yeah, it's kind, of, it's kind of like that. So if I, if I go back, so to get this equation, there's a, so, so, you, so the usual way is to do a gradient function. Mm -hmm. And then you to do, to do this uh, messy, I uh, will not call messy. So this is this, a uh, kind of promotion, uh, dynamical value, ad hoc, that it only holds in a at a linear level, if you want. And if you neglect higher gradient, mm -hmm. so you are chopping your expansion furthermore at the level of the equation of motion. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, uh, uh, and so doing that means that uh, yeah, you have not control about fluctuation. You, you cannot, uh, so that's kind of the problem. And also you have no idea how, so then you kind of say, okay, there's some equation from this non heterodynamic mode and do not correspond to anything. Our point is that, that maybe they correspond to something and, uh, and it can be defined in general. Right. And, and then once you kill, clearly you have to do, then you have to do a kind of calculation to see how, how these quantity are and how they are related to that. So that, that kind of uh, our point. And uh, I, I, we use the quantum effective action because it's a generic, could hold in the classical level, or so if you do an approximation, you can end up in classical level or in, in the full quantum one. And then, uh, so yeah, the next, we will kind of study these next time to try to understand that. So, but the, the physical picture is that you have energy momentum tensor, you have other modes, and then you want to find an equation and the, the physical thing is that, for example, the most kind of, um, easy way to think is to the dilatation. And the dilatation will have its own time scale. And, and the, the, I have to find a way to kind of give it this time scale. And, 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 and we, think, we thought that we think that the, the, this, this equation of motion and everything here is really equivalent to what we wrote for the dilatation. Oh, yeah. Thanks. OK, you're welcome. <laughs> Okay, so are there any further questions? So maybe I can uh, I can ask. Do you think about some other applications of of this uh, formalism? Oh yeah, that's kind of technology. And uh, people already thought about it. And uh, 
and uh, and also if in principle, so if it works for a realistic case, I don't see how it should not work for a realistic case, and, uh, and then call that on and uh, operating system. And, and uh, for example, yeah, study there's there's some already some study for these non hydrodynamic modes in contest part. And uh, for Fermi system, they are the work of Paul and Thomas Schiffer. They, they did a lot of forward, and then you can understand things. And then I would be curious to see. But this, so the point that this quantity were around already from the 70s, and nobody, so except there's, so, so there's a lot of literature about the dilatation because it's related to conform anomaly. And, but regard, the other two are really not so well studied. And uh, so that's also why I pointed out we should study that. Okay, maybe a uh, related question. So uh, now you develop the formalism. Yeah. So how far or how difficult is now to apply it apply it to the quantities that you are interested in? Uh, oh yeah. So or, okay. You know, in principle, uh, you should. So yeah, that's is kind of really hard. <laughs> so because you have to do a computation in, in a curve space time, not even curve space time, generic curve space time, and then you need to handle interaction a lot of it, and. Um, what, uh, what, what we are doing now is to consider uh, uh, for, yeah, as a first step, kind of, we are, we are working to the interaction. One is to con consider classical particle. So N classical particle and check how these guys are defined for that. It's not known in the literature. <laughs> it's already, that interact with the potential theory, so fully classical. And, uh, and then from the other side, I'm studying 2PI, a little bit in curve space time. And I, I'm kind of sure that from that you can get the answer because the kind of, you can, from 2BI, you can do a bunch of approximation to arrive to Boltzmann equation. Then the question is, then it would be kind of nice to see from Boltzmann equation how these things arise because then it simplifies a little bit the intuition. And uh, so that's how I do that actually, spoilers. So, and, but it's really hard. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. You're welcome. So are there any further questions? Okay, so, well, if not, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, very well, <laughs> very nice talk. Yeah. yeah.